Ever since its release in 2012, despite having its audience and fanfare, the Pelagos has basically fallen underneath the large casting shadow that is the Black Bay. But ever since its release, people have been almost longing for a smaller case option, or at least some different options from the brand. But specifically ever since the release of the Black Bay 58, we were looking for that Pelagos. When is it going to get its 58 treatment? Well, the day is finally here with the new release of the Pelagos 39. And in this video, we'll do a deep dive on this timepiece. What is new? What are the things that you should know? Pretty much everything else that you should consider before looking to buy. Let's jump in. So when looking at this Pelagos 39, we're going to break it down into five different categories. First, looking at a brief history, also understand the context of the Pelagos range, then move into the updated dimensions and the bracelet. Also then move into what else is new, talk about the caliber within, and then at the end, share some of my thoughts and just some final points of consideration when looking to buy or maybe not to buy. And before we jump into this video, if you love things dive watches, I'd recommend checking out our article looking at over 50 of the top dive watches in the watch industry. In addition to that, while you're at teddybaldister.com, definitely shop the new collection of dive watches that we have for sale, looking at something like the Longines Hydro Conquest, a do-it-all great dive watch for around $1,700 with a 70-hour power reserve movement from a great brand in Longines. You could also look at Oris with the Oris Aquis, wide selection of different options there, as well as the Diver 65, which takes that mid-20th century approach and also gets very experimented with different case materials with their Bico version, as well as some other variations that you can get lost in. And if you have a leaner budget, I'd recommend looking for something like the Mito Ocean Star for around $1,000. I think it's perhaps the best do it all dive watch that you can come by. And then also look at something from Citizen, like the ProMaster dive watches, specifically the Fugu model, right around five, $600 for a good do it all Japanese dive watch. Check it out in the description down below. Originally released the same year as the original 41 millimeter Heritage Black Bay in 2012, the Tudor Pelago serves as the brand's fully featured professional diving watch. The first iteration offered 500 meters of water resistance, a unique spring-loaded clasp extension system, a helium escape valve, and an intriguing three-dimensional rehot, all paired with a 42 millimeter titanium case while being powered by the ETA 2824 on the inside. For all intents and purposes, the Pelago serves as the modern complement to the Black Bay, showcasing a more contemporary design with Tudor's complete suite of watchmaking gadgets and tech. And while the Pelagos has always claimed its share of fans, it's safe to say that it has fallen short to the Black Bay, which now includes numerous different case sizes, GMTs, chronographs, and much more. In comparison, the Pelagos has received some attention as the watch received a manufacturer MT caliber in blue dial variant in 2015, with the niche left-hand drive variant coming the following year, and then you had the fix unveiled in 2021. This considered, the amount of releases for the Pelagos over the last half decade have been sparse and relatively niche in their focus all which makes this latest 39 millimeter Pelagos that much more special. So now let's discuss the changes in the wear and bracelet of this new Pelagos. With a 42 millimeter central case diameter, 50 millimeter lug to lug and thickness of over 14 millimeters, the original Pelagos wore relatively true to size. And while that isn't necessarily a crazy set of dimensions, especially given its 2012 release, the watch was generally seen as being more suitable to medium to larger size wrists, leading to a longing for many for the line to have the 58 treatment happen. Enter then the Pelagos 39, a watch that shaves three millimeters off the diameter of its relatively larger 42 millimeter sibling, while also serving up an 11.8 millimeter thickness and an impressively restrained 46.8 millimeter lug to lug measurement, according to my calipers when measuring. Now the case apart from a few subtle differences wears very similar to that of the Black Bay 58, making the wearing experience on wrist exceptional for those that have a medium to smaller size wrist. It is also important to note that the bezel does extend out slightly from the case, making it measure closer to 40 millimeters when you are measuring at that point, an end result caused by that thicker bezel. Beyond the case profile, the bracelet has also been substantially updated, here resting between the out of character use of 21 millimeter lugs that seem to have escaped criticism to some degree as a result of how well executed this bracelet is. Tapering to 16 millimeter, the bracelet culminates with a surprisingly long 18 millimeter wide by 46 millimeter long clasp that houses Tudor 
Tiger's T-Fit system of micro adjustment, allowing for a pull to slide additional centimeter of micro adjustment while also featuring a dive extension for two additional centimeters. These featured coupled with the sheer amount of removable links means this is about as much flexibility for sizing you are going to come across However, the clasp is long and almost mirrors the entire length of the case itself. So it is important that you try your best to have the clasp centered on the wrist for comfort. Some will perhaps miss the older spring operated extension system from the 42 millimeter Pelagos, but I see the T-Fit as an easier to use system and a more refined option in its appearance. It is also important to note that the Pelagos 39 comes as standard with a rubber strap with its own additional extension piece for use over a diving suit, but we don't have that on hand for review. So other than saying that it looks great in the press photos, that's pretty much all we can say. As a final point about the case and bracelet, they are being made in grade two titanium, which Tudor is explicitly mentioning in their descriptions of this watch, as opposed to some of the previous models where it was less clear in their messaging. Now, the two common grade of titanium in watchmaking are grade two and grade five. Grade two is a commercially pure titanium and is generally easier to work with, whereas grade five in comparison is an alloy mostly of titanium with aluminum and vanadium also in the mix, which in turn offers a stronger material and is going to be more resistant to scratches compared to grade two. Although I think most will agree that grade five would generally be preferred, you are still getting many of the points of upside here with titanium being 40% lighter than that of stainless steel by comparison and offers that matte look that so many associate with the material. On the topic of scratches, titanium is a softer metal making grade two more susceptible to scratches compared to stainless steel. That said, in my experience, I think this is partially overblown as given the matte look of titanium as a whole, it really only shows these scratches when you really are looking up close. You have to be under really close inspection to see many of these. So think about how brushed steel is better at hiding scratches compared to polished surfaces. I think a lot of that is also being played here. Grade five, sure, would have been probably preferred, but I do think you wanna keep in mind some of these downsides and how real will you actually feel them in practice. So it's pretty obvious that the big change here is going to be the new case on this watch. But besides that, what else is new here? For one, the Pelagos 39 loses the helium escape valve and is now certified for 200 meters of water resistance compared to the 500 meters of the 42 millimeter model. Next, we have the sunray finish of the ceramic bezel insert and on the black primary dial surface as well. Now, these elements are much more noticeable on the insert here and does allow it to catch the light in a very particular way. But I will say that this is not nearly to the effect that has been stressed in some of the press imagery and some of the descriptions that you're going to see online much more subdued than you would expect. And it still allows it to have more of this kind of tool-like imposing view that I think many people associate with this model family. While the basic dial design remains relatively similar with applied rectangular and triangular indices, this smaller Pelagos foregoes the use of a date and adds the red text for the Pelagos signature. At the outskirts, the three-dimensional rehot is also gone, here excluded to keep this model's case profile as slender as possible. A compromise I am willing to accept despite loving the look of that old rehot. Speaking briefly to the loom, which is thickly applied across the indices, hands, and the bezel, the performance is excellent as expected. Turning the Pelagos 39 over, we have the simply adorned closed case back, keeping watch over the MT5400 caliber within. Based on the MT5402, a smaller caliber designed to fit within the Black Bay 58 that was released in 2018, the MT5400 offers essentially the same suite of modern movement tech in a package that was optimized for visual aesthetics with different architecture, having first been seen in the 925 and 18 karat gold Black Bay 58 models released in 2021, both of which offer a Sapphire exhibition case back. Now, speaking to its general capabilities, it offers bi-directional winding, 70 hours of power reserve, a silicon hairspring, and a free-sprung balance architecture, all while operating at the Swiss standard of 28,800 vibrations per hour, or four hertz. In addition, this caliber is COSC certified, with Tudor going the extra mile to make sure it regulates and stays within minus two to plus four seconds a day, as opposed to the standard from COSC at minus four to plus six seconds a day. So accuracy won't be an issue here, but as a rule, we still like to test all of the watches that we review with this example managing an exceptional time of plus one to plus two seconds a day when testing across five different positions. So now to unpack some things to consider when looking at the Tudor Pelagos 
39. So first off, I'm gonna say that this is probably my favorite release from Tudor since early 2021 with the Black Bay Chronos. And for my personal taste, this is probably still in more alignment just because I have a smaller wrist. This is something that is absolutely up my alley. So I'll just say that right at the beginning. But now let's talk about some considerations on the negative end, and then we'll move into some of the pros of this watch first. The first two, not a big deal for me, but I'll just address them. First is going to be the 200 meters of water resistance compared to 500 meters. I don't care about this at all. I think the fact that anybody is saying that 200 meters is not enough is absolutely crazy. If you are one of those rare individuals that needs that, go for the 42 millimeter option. But that, I think that is absolute silliness to get mad about that. Grade two versus grade five, all reasonable, I'll just say this, in terms of actually showing scratches, titanium still hides scratches really well given the matte effect to it. Think of like a brush, brush surface. This is just my experience. I think some of this, how easy it is to scratch is overblown because you can't really see them until you get very close. But the other two points I'll mention, 21 millimeters for the lug width, I think that was just, interesting that they did this and um, honestly don't like that 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 was chosen as the width i think 20 millimeters would have been preferred of course the other point that i haven't seen mentioned too often is going to be the clasp now the t-fit clasp is absolutely fantastic but with that extension the diver extension it is making this clasp incredibly long you're talking about a clasp that is almost as long as the entire case and if you're somebody with a smaller wrist this is something to just keep in mind. Make sure you try to get this sized up perfectly so that it will be square on the backside of your wrist so you're all squared away and ready to go. But apart from that, I think this is a slam dunk from Tudor. Again, probably my favorite release from them in well over a year and definitely the release from the brand in 2022. Wearability, they answered this. I'm very surprised that they actually went with a 39 millimeter case, but it does wear, I'd say like a 39 to a 40 millimeter. It's right in that sweet spot. I thought they were gonna go for a 40 millimeter to add some distinction from the 58 line, but I'm not gonna be mad at this. I think this is a great size or at least another alternative to that 42. T-Fit clasp, as mentioned, fantastic. I think it's a standard setting type of clasp in this segment within the market. Loom is great. The MT caliber on the inside brings everything that you expect. 70 hour power reserve, COSD certification, additional properties against magnetism that you're going to help really with that peace of mind. Cost of this one is also going to be quite good in comparison to other Pelagos models. For any person that's trying to get this on a bracelet, a Pelagos model on the bracelet, this is gonna be the most attainable that you're going to come by. But I think the real reason why I like this watch, I think the number one thing going for this watch is that it's something different than the Black Bay. That's a dangerous place to be in from a brand. Tudor's never going to admit that they are potentially over leveraged into one direction, but you look at the watches that have worked over the last few years, actually the last decade for the most part, it's been Black Bay variations. So to have something else that is going to maybe potentially pull a little market share from some potential Black Bay 58 buyer and get them into another model like the Pelagos, I think is good for the brand. And quite candidly, I think this language, this design language is less inspired than some of the Black Bay type of language. When Tudor is trying to reinvent themselves in a way, and I think they have in the last 10 years, and not being that alternative to Rolex only, I think you need to have some contemporary design language that is solely representative of this new era of Tudor. The 58 leans very much into the past. The Pelagos to me feels like a modern created watch, but also is a watch that still resembles the ethos of say those Marine National Submariners from the 1970s. This is exactly why I like the Pelagos and why I'm so compelled by this model family. And I'm so happy that it is finally getting a bit more love, not just from the enthusiast circle at large, but also from Tudor as well. So quite frankly, I think this is immediately jumping to become one of the best luxury dive watches in its price segment. Consider some of those pros and cons associated with it. It's lightweight, it's easy to wear, but it offers all the refinement that I think people expect from a Tudor model in this price range. And I think this is a great hit for Tudor. I think easily their best release for 2022. All right guys, well that is my take looking at this new Tudor Pelagos, all the things you need to consider before looking to buy. What are your thoughts on this watch? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I know these have also been on the market for a bit of time now. So there's probably some people that are watching that are owners of this watch now. Could you give any just feedback and also just ownership type of testimony to owning this watch? That's very helpful for other people that are looking to buy. If you also enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That really does help out as well. If you wanna support the content, that's a great way to do so. Also the best way though, 
head to teddybolster.com. If you're the market for a great watch, definitely check out our site. We have some of the best offering of brands on our site. We offer 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. In addition to that, how we fund all of the productions here are through our website. We don't take money from the brands to create this type of content. So if you wanna support the content, you're in the market for a watch, it's a great place to go and do so. In addition to that though, all of the watches featured on our website are hand curated by myself and the team to know that if you're somebody shopping, you're an enthusiast and you wanna pick a great watch for a great price, you'll know in the back of your mind that this is a watch that you can be proud of and putting on your wrist. But all right guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.